Hello, everybody, and welcome to Shocker Family Connections. I'm sure you all may know by now, but my name is Tia Hill. I'm Assistant Director in the Office of Student Involvement, and I'm here to talk to you with our Director of Campus Recreation about the Active and Involved Shocker. Today's program is really going to focus on um, what are some opportunities on campus that you can um, encourage your students to participate in to help them grow. So in the meantime, as we get started, I do want to preface if you're just tuning in and maybe not familiar with the way the sessions work, we will be taking questions. If you're viewing this from YouTube Live, you can log into YouTube and then enter your questions in the comment section. If you're viewing this from Facebook Live, you can enter your questions directly in the comment section at any time. And we'll take those after today's session. So um, as we get started, I also want to say um, that I will be um, co-presenting today myself and, and John, um, and we'll be talking from the perspective of that involved student. So as I get started, I want to just tell you a little bit, both John and I and many of the speakers that you've seen this week, and if you see my eyes wandering around, I'm trying to navigate my screen, but many of the speakers that you all have heard from today are from um, student affairs. And student affairs is within a division of the university and their goal and a, a tagline that they really embrace and we embrace here within the division is the concept of connecting every student. So that idea and that concept of connecting every student, when you think about yourself as a parent or a family, you've always wanted to hopefully instill in them the way that they can connect with others, that they can build friendship, that they have people to rely on, whether that's friends or um, teachers that have helped them grow or connect them with other great opportunities, whether that's student organizations, sports, the ability to win awards, get that first job. Um, that's what we do here within Student Affairs. And it may not seem like it at first, as you heard about student involvement or campus recreation um, during orientation, or you think about those sessions of, oh, my student's joining a student organization, they're just gonna have fun, maybe they'll learn something along the way. It's a lot more than that. Our work in student involvement, um, all of our professional staff have master's degrees, usually in higher ed or, or college student personnel. And we um, have dedicated our lives to helping your student grow and be successful. And that um, focuses on student development theory, identity theory. A lot of the work that we do every day with our students is to help them grow and develop and be a better version of themselves upon the time that they graduate so that they can get that big job that they want and help them reach their goals. So in the model of connecting every student and the work that we do in student involvement, we offer a lot of opportunities for um, a student to be able to achieve some of those goals, whether it's making friends, um, expanding their network, connecting with peers, um, it could be uh, developing a new set of skills, it could be growing some of their current skills that they have. Um, and those skills that are going to be transferable to those new job opportunities that are going to help them be able to sell themselves in a competitive field that is going to help them win that big job. So you may wonder, like, how does that really correlate to somebody joining a student organization like Student Activities Council, which plans events? All of the student organizations that are offered out there, you think about your own experience, whether it was your first job or the first time maybe you joined the junior league or you were um, a scout leader. Um, all of those things focus on time management, your ability to think critically, your ability to be accountable, whether that's being held accountable or hold other people accountable. Those are all essential skills that you learn by being within a group that is going to rely on you, that is going to lean on you to, um, for your ideas, for your ability to connect, for your ability to help that organization and that team grow. So that's what we do in student involvement. We offer up those experiences and opportunities for a student to do just that. And so I'm gonna to talk to you about the things that student involvement offers to help your student be active and involved on campus. And in doing so, I'm gonna kind of share our website and help walk through that with you. And so if you're wondering kind of what's going on on campus, if you're wondering what some of those opportunities are, you know how to navigate our website and use those resources and tools that you can then um, refer to your student on. So I've got to pop on a banner at the bottom of here 
and it's our, our website. It's wichita.edu backslash involvement. And again, I work in student involvement, um, kind of sum it up, we help students get involved. So I'm gonna share my page here real quick. This is the student involvement webpage. So it's wichita.edu backslash involvement. One of the first things that you see up here is this moving video. This video is captures and highlights of all the experiences that we offer, the spaces that we manage, and the opportunities that are out there for your students to kind of engage with others. Um, our office focuses on social events, entertainment, cultural events, events that are civic-minded, service, a lot of different initiatives. And we focus and provide those services not only through events, but programs. And as staff, we're not the only ones that plan those. We give the authority and the ability over to our students to initiate a lot of those events and things, whether you see them in that video or that you've seen them on the university calendar, or any of those places and spaces. So one of the first things that you'll see on our website is this little yellow box up here. This says stay connected with our weekly newsletter. This isn't just for students, um, any parent or anybody can sign up in the sign up here button. It's gonna send you to a page where you just type in your email address and you'll receive a weekly newsletter called the Newsy. And that Newsy features what are the events and things that we're doing throughout the week um, that your student may or may not be interested in participating in. So that might be something that you just wanna connect with to keep up to date with what's going on on campus and what our office is offering. If we scroll down here, we're gonna see more about student involvement. This button's really just gonna tell you about the staff and who we are and kind of our mission and vision and values. I, I live those values. I'm not gonna to talk to you about them today. I'm gonna to talk to you more about those tangible things. This next section is about experiencing campus life. We've got an event guide on here. I'm gonna go ahead and press this button. So as you wonder um, about what those opportunities are for your student to get connected, our event calendar here, if you scroll down, it's got our schedule of events. It's also got a navigation up here that tells you we've got the schedule of events in this section. The next section focuses on a film series we've got going on and then some virtual tours um, that folks can participate in. So here is our list of events. And as I mentioned, they range from social, educational, um, service oriented, uh, so there's a lot of opportunities here to get engaged on campus. Just last night, we hosted an outdoor movie in Cessna Stadium, um, and that was, we showed Bring It On. We're showing, um, this series happens every two weeks, and so on October 8th at 7 p.m., we'll be showing Jumanji The Next Level out on Cessna Stadium. We provide popcorn, we provide bottled water. Really, all your students gotta do is maybe bring a blanket and some pillows and a few friends and join us on the field for a movie. Um, we also offer up event um, art galleries. We have a, a gallery downstairs in the Radford Student Center. Um, our artists hold receptions, usually every other week as um, with the rotations of our exhibits. Um, we have service programs like Mentoring Mondays, Food Bank Fridays. Um, uh, we're also doing some service initiatives with Meals on Wheels. So a lot of great stuff and you'll find that on this list. And then there's that Flicks on the Field reminder down here and then those virtual experiences. This, um, this does change daily. This is an automated calendar. So every day that you pop up, you'll see Friday, September 25th, that's today. So the most current event will always be at the top. And then if you wanna see more, you can always click on the Wichita State University calendar and you'll not only see our events, but you'll see um, events and opportunities that are um, offered by all of campus. I'm gonna pop back on our main page. So those are some of the events and initiatives we offer. But if we want to really talk about the ways for your student to get engaged and get connected, I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see the full screen. Uh, try to make it a little bigger for you. Um, what you'll see here in the center, this ways to get involved right up here on the banner. Ways to get involved. We've got our community service board, which is a group of students that are generally focused on providing service. So as I mentioned to you, the Meals on Meals, um, they also work with um, big, big Brothers Big Sisters. They have a deep connection with our United Way of the Plains. And um, so a lot of service initiatives and events. Um, they'll be doing a day one or uh, a day of service with District One um, on October 24th. 
they're getting ready to host a philanthropy during homecoming called um, Shocks for Socks, which it will be a sock and cold weather um, clothing drive to help um, not only campus, but our local community and donating those items. So a lot of great initiatives. And again, that's a student-led group. Um, and I'll pop on here and show you their page. That is a, a group of students that they're dedicated to service and are passionate about service, and that is what they offer. You'll see on their page the membership, how to join, and upcoming events. So if you wonder, if you want a one-stop location to see what the Community Service Board is doing, you just click on that link and it'll show you all their events that they're hosting. Uh, back up here. The next group I want to talk about, I'm going to skip fraternity and sorority life for a little bit. I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to talk about the Student Activities Council. You may have heard about them throughout the summer. Um, SAC, they host a lot of great events throughout the year. Um, COVID hasn't stopped them, but I will say it is it has altered the way that they program. So our Student Activities Council, a lot of their initiatives this semester, as we've um, kind of leaned in and polled our students, they want prizes, they want to win gift cards, they want those big things. Um, so some of our virtual programs like Trivia Nights and Bingos, we've tried to ensure that folks can, can get those rewards that they're looking for, but we're also hosting um, programs like build a friend where they can pick up a kit and they can make their friend on their own or we're doing um, tie-dye kits and they can come and pick that up and do it on their own. Um, they've also had a hand in helping out with some of the movies and some of those other in-person initiatives. So if your student is looking for a great way to connect with a good group of students, learn some essential event planning skills, maybe learn some marketing events, um, strengthen their time management, strengthen their accountability and critical thinking, Student Activities Council might be good for them. Um, and you'll find on their page, you can check out their fall 2020 events, you can meet their executive council and who their student leaders are. And if you scroll down, you can see some of their semester highlights for events that are coming up. So that's the Student Activities Council in a nutshell. Again, a group of students who plan events on campus that are really social, educational, cultural um, focused. So I've talked to you about CSB and Student Activities Council. The next group I'm gonna talk to you about is our Student Government Association. And our Student Government Association is just that. Maybe your student was involved in high school um, like with Student Council or um, uh, model UN or some other other political or um, advocacy related student organizations. Our Student Government Association, they are a group of students that advocate for the student body as a whole. They have a president, they have a legislative branch, they have a dedicated group of senators that represent um, some underrepresented student populations as well as each of the academic colleges. Um, and they do this through weekly meetings, they have chair, um, chairperson positions, special committees, um, and a lot of a great work that goes on, again, to advocate for the student body as a whole. So most of you may have known, if you have any part in paying um, your, your bills for your students, they pay a dedicated student fee. Um, our Student Government Association is in charge of allocating that student fee back out, whether it's to departments or student organizations so that they can continue to provide services and initiatives for your shopper. Um, they do that through Senate as well as the Student Peace Committee. And again, all of those are manned by students within Wichita State University. So if um, your student is maybe interested in politics, they're interested in advocacy on how government or universities run and operate, a place in student government might be right for them. I'm gonna make the screen a little bigger because I want to emphasize this big yellow block if you go to the SGA website. It says check out our open positions. Um, SGA does have some open positions right now. So if we click on Student Senate, we're gonna see a little description of the legislative branch um, that the senators are involved in taking action, approving allocations, managing the allocations, approving recognized student organization. It covers those roles and responsibilities. And then it also mentions what are some of the open positions that are available. So if your student is in applied studies, health professions, if they are a returning adult, if they are a graduate student, or they are an underserved um, minority student, or if they just wanna be an at-large senator, and many of those positions are available. That at-large senator, 
that position, you may wonder, well, what does that mean? That is any constituent. So that individual does not have to be a, in any one of these criteria. They can be from College of Health Professions or study Applied Studies. It doesn't matter. It's just they're representing the university as a whole instead of representing a specific constituency group. So those positions are available. Um, we're also seeking uh, members to serve on our election commission. So every year, our Student Government Association holds elections for president um, and vice president. So those parties um, will run for office, um, they have an election, they go through their debates, they're all of those sorts of things, just like in any other um, election period on the ours annually. And so we hire on, and I say hire because they're selected and they do get paid to serve on that election commission, but they get to um, be the ones to administer the election rules. They hold the, the bodies accountable. Um, they organize the commission. They organize those debates. So again, there's some, some great opportunities for your students to learn some awesome new skills and also serve their student body as a whole. The last group I'm going to talk about as I back up through here um, is our fraternity and sorority life. So uh, a lot of students throughout the summer have a lot of questions about fraternity and sorority life. A lot of parents have questions. Um, I will just kind of summarize our fraternity and sorority life. Those students are dedicated to service, philanthropy, scholarship. They are academically minded. They have great study and social skills. They hold each other accountable. When you join a fraternity or sorority, not only are you connecting with a group of students during your college career, you're really connecting with some lifelong friends um, that will also be your, your future colleagues. They will help you connect and network with a lot of others. They have a great um, alumni network, and so there's a lot of um, connections with job opportunities, mentorship through those fraternities and sororities. We have about 22 fraternities and sororities on campus. You can see all of them um, represented within our three individual councils. Our Panhellenic Council, they just did a formal recruitment in August. Um, some of our groups will be open for um, open bids during the spring semester. So that's something to look out for if, you're, um, if your student is maybe missed that window of opportunity. And then our inner fraternity council, they recruit all year long. And our multicultural Greek council, um, they also recruit with them all year long, but their recruitment process looks a little different. It has more detailed criteria. I will tell you that because there are 22 fraternities and sororities, I wanna be clear with you that the expectations, the requirements of all of those are not the same, okay? So maybe some people have that assumption about fraternities and sororities. You have to have a certain GPA, it must cost a certain amount of money um, to join, that you have a certain amount of dues. Those things are true, but those numbers and those criteria differ, for, differ from each group, as well as the sets of values and the, the um, the sets of values that they are adopt as an organization. So be very clear if your student is looking to join a fraternity or sorority that they really should embrace um, the idea of doing some research and finding the one that fits them the most. Um, the other part of this, as we are experiencing COVID-19 and what is going on, that there um, some of the intake processes, the recruitment processes are differing because each of our fraternities and sororities are also connected to national organizations. So not only do they rely on the rules set by Wichita State University and our department, they also look towards their national organizations for guidance on how they should recruit, what kind of events they should be doing at this time. So some of those will look different for each of those groups. So you kind of have to do your homework and maybe ask um, some questions of those groups and what their processes might look like right now. So I've talked to you about three of our main student um, functions, which are community service boards, um, student activities council, and student government association. I talked to you a little bit about fraternity and sorority life. The one thing I want to reiterate is all of these, once the student joins them, gain some essential skills, okay? So those are what we would call leadership skills. They all take part, and by taking part on campus, they become student leaders. There's another aspect to leadership on our campus. We are, um, we are the kind of body that covers leadership development programming here at Wichita State. So in student involvement, we have a staff dedicated to leadership development programs. Um, and under that umbrella, we offer leadership development retreats, 
such as um, Leadership or some Leadership Institute. We have some one-day workshops. We're getting ready to host a program in November called Catalyst. Um, we're getting ready to actually launch a new podcast. Um, and so like that leadership podcast will focus on um, leaders and administrators from the university, from around campus, from all over the country, as well as the voices of our students as they talk about how their skills, their specific leadership skills and their styles help them to achieve their goals, whether in their organization or in their work. So those are great things that are being offered through our leadership development area. Um, and they're pushing out a first year program called Emerging Leaders, um, which is focused on first year students, understanding their leadership styles, their purpose, and how their leadership styles and skills relate to um, themselves, how they can speak on behalf of those skills, how they can um, uh, explain to people what their skills are, articulate those skills. I, I obviously need to learn how to articulate, um, but then they can also understand how their skills work in a team and also understand how those skill set and those leadership styles um, are a reflection of their teammates and how they can work together. So there's a lot of great work that happens within our department that again is strengthening the leadership abilities of those students and they can do it through events, workshops, or by joining any of our student groups that I've mentioned. The last thing that I'm going to talk about before I pass it on to John is our recognized student organizations. As I talked to you about some of the other groups, those are groups that um, were developed by the university um, as best practices to offer students some well-rounded and unique experiences. Um, we have a group of about 300 student organizations on campus, and I like to refer to those as kind of independently ran student organizations, as in at some point in time over the years past, a group of students um, decided that this Organizations should exist at Wichita State University, and they got that organization approved, they chartered that organization, and um, they were requested and were recognized by the Student Government Association to exist and be a representation here at Wichita State University. So again, there's over 300 of them. If you've got a student who's got a great idea for a student organization, and they've got some friends or some individuals that they know are also connected, Wichita State offers them the opportunity to create that student organization and foster and grow that group here. And you can do that, and I'm gonna blow my screen up a little bit. So on, the, on this section about recognized student organizations, you've got a how to start a new RSO. It just takes an individual with an idea, a group of five students that also agree to that idea, the mission of that organization, the values of that organization, they, create a constitution together, they create those bylaws, and then they recruit an advisor that um, serves as a university representative to help them grow and foster them throughout that process. Now, if you've got a student who's still not sure of what all of those opportunities and those student groups are at WSU, you can click under here under RSOs and learn more about our portal through Shocker Sync. Shocker Sync is a management tool that is almost like a Facebook for student organizations, essentially. Um, and you can, once you go to Shocker Sync, you see this discover unique opportunities. You can search keywords on here. So if your student is an engineering major and you search engineering, this page will um, show you that we've got Biomedical Engineering Society, Institute of Industrial and System Engineers, as well as Tall Beta Pi, which is an honors engineering organization. So you can search by major, I'll do nursing. We've got a pre-physician assistant student association and the future healthcare um, professionals. So again, any of those key words you can think of, whether it's a degree area or personal interest, it's gonna populate those student organizations that again, exist. Um, the other thing, like if it is personal interest, We've got a lot of um, students who are interested in gaming on campus. Let me spell it right. So gaming. If they're interested in whether it's video games or um, tabletop games, if you search gaming, it pulls up the Shocker Gaming Club as well as tabletop gaming. Shocker Gaming is kind of like an esports club. It's more of like a casual um, competitive gaming organization. And then you've got tabletop gaming who are more leisure board game um, players. So any of those keywords that you search. And if you wonder how to connect with those students, you just click on the organization that's up here. 
it goes to their page and you can click the, either the contact button or you can scroll down and it will show you who their officers are and you can click on that officer and then you can send them a message directly. So I hope that go through by going through this website, we've equipped you with some of the tools to be able to help your student connect with what are the opportunities that exist here while on campus. Um, as I mentioned before, that is, and you'll see it on the banner, that is wichita.edu, and that is student involvement as our office. We are located on the second floor of the Radigan Student Center in room 216. Students can stop by during the week. We are open from 8 to 6, Monday through Thursday, and 8 to 5 on Friday. So we've even got some extended hours depending on their schedules. Um, and they can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to connect um, and learn more about the things that we do. So I hope that enlightens you on some of the ways that you can kind of engage your student um, on campus, that you can help encourage them to get connected, whether with a student group or some of the events that are going on. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to our Director of Campus Re Recreation, John Lee, and he's going to talk to you about the work that his team is doing over in Campus Rec. Hi, John. Oh, are you on mute? I knew I'd do that. Yeah. Thanks, there Thanks you for go. the introduction. Um, awesome. You know, student involvement and, and campus recreation work together a lot. Um, so sometimes we have some of the same missions. Um, but campus recreation, our main focus is to create wellness activities um, that promote a healthy and active lifestyle. Um, and we do that with fun events, uh, activities that keep you moving, and um, and our goal is to have fun and promote wellness at the same time. Just like student involvement, we also um, believe that student connections are very important. Um, many of our students um, develop lifelong relationships with friends um, that they that started in campus recreation, whether it's through the rowing team or playing in rural sports or a different sport club or through our e-sports uh, um, hub or our, our varsity team as well. Um, we also employ, uh, have one of the largest employment of students on campus. Um, you can do anything from lifeguard to teach a group X class, to, um, to work in our facility, to work down at the boathouse that we have. Um, we also have um, uh, intramural officials that have gone on to high level officiating, whether it's in high school or college. So there's a variety of jobs here. And you know, one thing you'll hear about when you look into Wichita State, they're into applied learning. And um, and so we believe in that philosophy and we try to teach them, it's just like student involvement, leadership skills, time management skills, and so on. Um, I did wanna show you a, a little PowerPoint today that um, can better demonstrate um, what we do in campus recreation. Um, and uh, and have look at some fun pictures along the way. Um, the Heskett Center is where campus recreation is located, um, but we have facilities are all around campus and all and even all across the city um, that students can get involved with. And as we go through the presentation, we'll show you some of those um, facilities. So we're going to move on to the next slide and talk about our recreational sports programs, which the first thing we'll talk about is intramural sports. And just in case you don't know, intramural sports is when students on campus play a sport against other students on campus. Just like in the picture um, on the screen, um, that's a flag football game. We have officials there. Um, we have over 40 intramural sports, uh, things like basketball, soccer, um, Volleyball, sand volleyball. We also have a lot of individual events such as uh, tennis, badminton, um, esports. And um, again, it goes from the first day of school to the end of school. We have, you know, intramurals taking place all the time. Um, we also have sport clubs. Uh, sport clubs are um, student organizations. Um, but oftentimes it's a little bit more competitive than intramural sports. And many of our clubs will play other universities. For example, our men's and women's soccer club will play Nebraska, Creighton, um, KU. They'll go down to Texas, Oklahoma, um, on the St. Louis. 
and they uh, play in regional and national tournaments. Um, same thing with our cricket team. Um, our Quidditch team plays in tournaments around the Midwest. Quidditch is uh, a game from the movie, Harry Potter movies, if you're familiar with that. Um, and so we have 15 or 16 uh, clubs and we're always adding more to the list. Um, and there's no, um, uh, there's no requirement that you have, that have to have previous experience in that sport. Many of us come from a background that maybe you played soccer or football at, in high school, but you want to give um, lacrosse a try or water skiing. Um, that's certainly um, attainable within our program. Um, we're going to move on to the next one because we also have two independent varsity rowing, uh, two independent sports that are varsity rowing and esports. These are not part of the athletic department. They're part of campus recreation. Really the thing that separates them if we have uh, full-time coaches and scholarships. Um, a little bit about rowing. Currently we have about 59, 60 rowers on our um, varsity team. You do not need any experience to come out. Again, many of these athletes that we have come out are played other sports um, growing up and in high school. And um, so it's a great, activity to get involved with. It's a lifelong um, activity as well. We, uh, the rowing team um, rows on the Arkansas River, which is downtown, and we have a boathouse down there. And we'll talk a little bit about more about that in a second. Um, but great sport um, for anybody to, to join. We also just, uh, this is our second year to have a eSports varsity team. Uh, they participate in four different uh, uh, games currently, League of Legends, Overwatch, and Rocket League are among the ones that we play. Um, you do have to try out to be on the WSU Esports team, um, and then um, then you have competitions both online and in person, particularly when there's not COVID around. They do to go to regional and national championships. So that's very fun. We're going to move on to the next slide and talk about a special event. Just like student involvement, we always we have lots of special event and most of them about are about again movement, keeping people fun things to do. Um, every year we have a 5k pumpkin run. Um, we average around 800 runners and then we go around campus. This year it's going to be a little different because of covid unfortunately that we're going to do it virtual so you just put it you sign up for it, you can get prizes and um, you just report your time. Uh, hopefully next year we'll be back. It's a, a race that takes place in October every year, as you could probably guess. We also have things like a health fair, puppy paddle. We, if people have dogs, they can come to our pool the day before we drain it in December um, to swim and have fun with their with their pets. Um, we have weightlifting competition, hunted house. We have a beach party um, in our pool, and we're always creating new events. And uh, so look for that on our web page. Um, if you have the opportunity. And we'll go on to the next thing. Uh, we also have a, a really solid wellness program. Um, the first thing I'd like to mention is we have F45. F45 is um, in many cities around the country. It's um, uh, functional fitness in 45 minutes. Um, and um, if you were to join a club in, let's say, Dallas or Kansas City, it would cost you $100 a month. There's no extra charge. Um, to take part of that program at in the Heskett Center through Campus Recreation. Um, there's screens on the walls and the, uh, the, you follow the exercises and there's a group X instructor or two for every class helping you use the right posture and, and so on. And every day there's a different routine. It never gets stale. Um, it keeps moving. It's high energy. And um, But you can also go at your own pace. Uh, I do this all the time and um, if I can't do a certain exercise, they teach me how to modify it. We also have GlideFit, a group X class in the pool where they do yoga on boards or sometimes more strenuous things on those GlideFit boards. Uh, so that's a fun program. Um, we all get um, uh, tense and with tests and, and life. And, and so we have a massage therapy program. And for students, it's $35 to get a massage for a half hour and 55 for uh, the entire hour. Um, and we also try to promote, promote um, nutritional and wellness talks uh, to students, both in person and virtually 
um, these days on um, YouTube or Facebook. So look for those throughout uh, the year. And we're going to move on to the next thing, which I think is outdoor adventures. Um, currently, we're not doing these this semester or and probably next because of COVID, because we're not allowed to travel. Uh, but these are the things we've done in the last uh, year or two before before COVID. We went whitewater rafting, horseback riding, went to either a Chiefs or Royals game or both. We went uh, snow skiing in Winter Park, uh, took people to Oceans of Fun in Kansas City, and and so much for more. You would just you just sign up online um, through the Campus Recreation website. Uh, there is a fee for going on these trips. We try to fish, pay for the cost. We're not trying to make it as cheap as possible to pay for the travel and the actual activity. Um, and so the, the picture there is of students at Wichita State going down to Oklahoma City and um, going on that. It's, it's a man-made course. Whitewater rafting is really fun. So look for that as, as the year goes along. And we'll move on to the next slide. And so I just wanted to talk about our facilities, what's in the Campus Recreation Heskett Center. We have a pool. 25 meters by 25 yards and in a distance, if you can tell, there's a diving board. So we have a diving well that's a separate body of water. Um, so you certainly can do lap swimming. We have group X classes in the pool. You can also just come in the pool and splash around and have fun. We have a basketball hoop. Um, so it's a fun pool in that sense as well. For those people who don't know how to swim, we do have swim lessons that we, we teach in there as well. So um, that is a great, um, um, asset of the Heskett Center. And if you might know, if you ever get injured um, or hurt your knee in any ways, swimming is one of the best activities because it's low impact. Um, where we play most of our uh, recreational sports, whether it's intramurals or sport clubs, is uh, outdoor ones anyways. It's at the Metroplex, which is on 29th and Oliver, just a mile or so from campus. And we have three fields. Two of them are lighted where we play soccer and lacrosse and Quidditch and all those type of things, and where all outdoor intramurals take place as well. It's a great complex, um, and we play well into the evening um, each night. So there's a couple spots. We'll move on to the uh, next slide. Um, in November of this past year, we opened the eSports Hub. Um, so as you can see in the picture, that we have um, 20 um, eSports computers. They're gaming computers that are high-end with um, the fastest internet speed that's possible, I've been told. Um, we also have two, if you see two television screens in the back, we also have um, Xbox and PlayStation where you can play Madden or Super Smash or uh, um, a variety of different NBA 2K of games. And we're always adding more. We even have a virtual reality um, um, gaming system as well that you can check out. Um, the most important thing I want to say about this room is it doesn't cost you anything extra. Just use your, to get into the Heskett Center, you just swipe your card um, and you get in, or you know your issue ID number, and then you come right to this room and um, we're open Monday through Friday, six to 10, and a little bit lesser hours on the weekend. So it's available um, almost all the time. And the, the, the nice thing about eSports, being um, in the Heskett Center is that we try to promote a healthy lifestyle. So we try to get them away from the computer and get them into our other areas around um, the facility to, to work out. And really the best gamers in the world um, are in good shape because you have to have that quick hand-eye coordination to be good. Um, another picture on, the, on my right anyways is our gym. It's a gigantic gym. It's 56,000 square feet. We have three full-size college basketball courts um, that are wood, and then we have two more that are synthetic. Our track team, uh, it's so big, our track team practice is indoor uh, track and have many competitions, three or four throughout the, the year, mostly in the um, winter months. Um, on those courts, we can play volleyball, badminton, um, basketball, of course, and, and many other games. And it's a great walking track. It's six or running track. It's um, six lanes, um, 200 meters, and um, it's it's uh, utilized a lot in the winter months when it's a little cold or icy outside. So we have a couple more slides to show you. 
Um, right next to the Heskett Center are the um, our outdoor uh, courts. Um, four of the courts are tennis, as you might see. Um, and just recently, we added a futsal court, which is soccer that's out. That's a little different kind of ball, so it doesn't go as far. Uh, but that's very popular. And we have two half-court basketball courts. I was out. I was out there last night. I think we had like 50 or 60 uh, WSU students playing tennis or um, futsal or basketball out there. Uh, the nice thing about this is you just press a button and the lights turn on. Um, and so you don't need, um, doesn't cost anything, just press a button if it gets dark and as it's getting darker these days. Uh, but the, the weather's nice. It's a, it's a great asset that we have there. Um, I mentioned that we have facilities that in, in Wichita, they're outside the main campus. And that is the boathouse, which is located on the west bank of the Arkansas River downtown. Um, this is where you'll see our rowing team row out of. Um, but we also offer um, a small boat rental as well. Um, you can go down there and rent uh, kayaks and paddle boats and stand up paddle boards and a, and a racing shell if you're into um, a crew and rowing. Um, as well. It does cost a, a small fee to, to do that uh, per hour, um, but it's a great facility and it's got a, a wonderful dock. And um, on a nice day like today, it is um, um, it's fun to get out and do something different as well. Um, let's see if the, the next slide, I don't know if there's, that's it. Yeah. Um, so that's our facilities and our some of our programs and, and just like student involvement, we can go on for days talking about all our our fun events that we have. And we're always creating new ones. And I want to say this too: if we don't have something, please ask us, um, and maybe we can um, add that to our um, menu of items that we offer. So now we'll get Tia back in. The, yeah. To the picture. So we don't have any questions, um, but I did want to highlight, I know we talked about this earlier, but I brought up your all's website. Um, and so just showing folks if they visit wichita.edu backslash campus recreation and they need to reference um, or learn more about anything that you mentioned that they can navigate the page. And um, they can sign up for pumpkin registration right now, both either um, basically they can run on their own time and record their time, right? That's correct. Uh, and we do get prizes if when um, uh, and t-shirts just for signing up, and uh, so even the t-shirt alone kind of covers almost the cost of what it would. Yeah, and I think there's a referral program now to where they can get like a discounted rate if they refer other runners. It, exactly, and there's even if you have little kids, there's even uh, a right a fun yep, the one day for for young kids to walk or run. So I know that's a growing tradition. Do you know how many, how many folks ran last year? Just shy of 800. So shy, yeah, the so. student wants to be part of a growing Wichita State tradition, encourage them to participate in Pumpkin Run. Um, yeah. We also got on this page, um, if if your, your interest was piqued by intramurals or boats and bikes, check out the website. There's direct pages associated with boats and bikes. They can find out more about intramurals. Um, intramural teams are up and running, and so for folks to join that, there's a platform called I Am Leagues, and they'll just navigate through here, and it shows, ooh, I don't know what happened to the page. Intramural sport registration, and it'll send them to I Am Leagues, and from there you can see um, the schedule of events that are coming up and they can register for their team or register as an individual for any of those. And those are all, are they free to join or is there a fee? Um, all our uh, intramural sports are, are free to join, um, except when we have bowling, we can charge a little fee. That's more of a spring sport. And, and, then, we, get, and we get, we pay for those through student fees that you were mentioning earlier. Yep, that the student government allocates, yeah. So I always feel like they always already pay. Yes. <laughs> and that's what I think both of our offices um, and our teams, we definitely do a lot to ensure that we're pretty much offering 
um, the programs and services we have at zero to low cost. You know, we mentioned the, the, the outdoor adventure trips, those have a minimum cost associated with them. Um, but that's just because the, the rate per person is so much higher than what even your student would pay for student fees. So we're trying to offset some of those expenses, um, but again, to make it affordable for the students. Um, I know I asked this question earlier too, John. I don't know if you want to speak to it again. Um, what kind of, uh, you mentioned the, the courts, um, both like handball, tennis courts, if they don't have the materials um, to, to play that, do you offer those as a way that they can check out? Absolutely. We have an equipment room with most of every, anything you want to do that we have at the Hess Center. I think we have the equipment for it. Um, I didn't mention that we have racquetball courts, but we do have that as well. Um, so you want to run a racket or a, a, a ball, soccer. If you want to even take some stuff outside like a football, we have that as well. We also um, check out towels and locks for when you sweat a little bit and to keep your um, gear safe. Uh, but all you do is go to our equipment room with your shocker ID or at least know your shocker ID number because we can see your picture either way. And then you, uh, we give you the equipment. And then when you're done with the equipment, you give us your shocker card again. We swipe it and then we um, give you credit that you brought it in. Um, we even check out our um, eSports peripheral uh, stuff that you need to if you didn't bring your own stuff. So the keyboard, the mouse, and the head headphones that you go with it. I'm not Mr. Esports, but those uh, the keyboards are specific uh, in gaming type versus the kind that's in my office, uh, which is in really great for gaming. But we check all that out for no extra cost as well. And I know also, and I'm going to show your your web page again, if they ever have any questions about your hours, your hours at the Heskett Center are listed yep. right on the front page there. So um, it's also got information about your staff and then links to any of your social media. So they can follow you on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram for more up-to-date information. Exactly. And we try to, uh, you know, if we're having intramurals or sport clubs, we try to take a lot of pictures. So you might see, you uh, um, pictures of games and events that we do throughout the year. John, I think that's gonna wrap up our presentation for tonight. I thank you for joining us. Um, and for the folks that engaged with us today, thank you for joining us. Um, you were participating in the active and involved um, shocker here at Wichita State and we're connecting your students with opportunities to get involved and get engaged and really enjoy their college experience. So we hope you enjoyed this presentation. And thanks again, John, I'm gonna pop you out of here. Okay. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is this is the last in the la one of the last information sessions, I will say in our week long series. We do have one more um, session tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And that is the Get Connected program. And that's going to be with our Assistant Vice President of Student Affairs, Alicia Newell. And that's also going to be a parent and family meeting. So she's going to update you um, as parents and families of Shockers on not only the resources that are available to you and helping to support your student, but how you can continue to be supported through your journey as a parent who is also supporting your student while they may be on campus in residential housing, or maybe they're even um, taking their classes at home as a lot of our students are working remotely. So tune in again um, tomorrow at 10 a.m. for a Get Connected for a parent and family meeting. And thank you so much, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.